Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's 7am uh, on a beautiful Melbourne spring morning today and this week I had some time to myself and I took the time to go through a 6,000 word article on HubSpot that I found very interesting. Now this article is all about marketing statistics. Now if you're a statistics nut like I am you will really enjoy this video because I have compiled the two most standout points from the eight categories in this article or the eight chapters in this article. Now statistics are fantastic. A lot of people ignore statistics and they brush over them but what statistics are, are they, they are a pattern. Statistics are basically uh, a compilation um, to show you a pattern in any field. Okay, I really enjoy statistics and I take st statistics seriously. Try saying that five times fast. So let's get stuck into it. We have eight chapters to cover, um, content marketing, social media, video marketing, email marketing, lead generation, advertising, marketing technology, and sales. Now remember, if you enjoy this video, hit the like button below and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. Now, as I said, I've compiled the two most standout points from each of the eight categories, and I'm gonna give you my two cents worth on uh, each point. Hopefully it'll help your business and help you succeed in the digital space. So let's talk about content marketing first of all. Now, here's the first point. 86% of people look up the location of a business on Google Maps. Now, when we build websites here, it's amazing how many people don't have a um, Google Map place mark for us to embed onto their website. So typically when we make a website, we go, okay, can we have your Google business uh, page? So we're gonna embed that onto your, your website so people can find you. And then I realize that people don't have a Google map placeholder for their business. And I just find that astounding. 86% of people look up the location of a business on Google Maps. Guys, you, you must have a location marker on Google Maps. And you do that via um, tidying up your Google business page profile. It's complicated. Google, Google keeps shifting the names of what, they, what their packages are, but at the moment it's called a Google My Business page, okay? Um, simply sign up for Google My Business, uh, create your um, place mark on Google Maps, save it, and away you go. Then you can embed that onto your website and people can find you quickly and easily, 86% of people, okay? Next, let's talk about uh, content marketing tip number two. One in 10 blog posts are compounding, meaning organic search increases their traffic over time. What does that mean? <clears throat> Basically, that means that if you write a blog post, you may not get many views, first of all, but because that blog post is sitting on your website, the views will be compounding. You might get 10 views this month, then the next month you might get 15 views, then the next month you might get 30 views, then the next month you might get five views, views, but you're getting more and more views over time. You've written it once and it stays on your blog post, so, sorry, it stays on your blog and it continues to be an asset. It continues to draw traffic in off the internet onto your website and um, it's, it's a uh, lead generation asset. So you can easily recognize that the more blog posts you have on your website with the more value orientated content, the more organic traffic you're gonna draw into your website uh, compounding over time. Very important guys to take blogging seriously, uh, written blog posts that is, as well as video. Um, but we've got, I think it's 20 something uh, written articles on our website at the moment. And the amount of uh, leads we get from that is, uh, I, I can't dismiss that, okay? It's, it's very, very important, very, very valuable. Let's move on to social media. I'm gonna take uh, the top two takeaways from this uh, chapter. Again, it's a 6,000 word article on HubSpot.com. Social media uh, takeaway number one, only 3% of internet using adults say they have a lot of trust in the information they get from social media. So what does that mean? That means that, um, you know, People think that social media is uh, a bit of a bluff. It's a bit of uh, false marketing. Uh, there's a bit of spin. It's a bit of uh, you know selling snake oil in the old days. Um, so what that comes down to is you must um, uh, you must you must be truthful. You must be authentic. You must be um, 
you must be truthful. There's no other, there's no other way to, to describe it. Uh, authentic content, as I've talked about many times before, is what is selling. Google, Google now has a, um, uh, a policy. Uh, it's, a, it's an unofficial policy that the internet is talking about. There's many people whispering this uh, acronym, which is EAT, EAT. Now, EAT in Google's um, uh, policy at the moment, they're ranking uh, sites more highly that have an EAT factor. EAT stands for um, expertise, authoritativeness, and um, truthfulness, okay? So you need to make sure that uh, you are giving truthful information, authentic information uh, to the internet. Social media uh, takeaway number two, 86% of consumers prefer an authentic and honest brand personality on social networks. So, you know, you can see by the style of videos that I've been putting out for uh, the last period of time, for I don't know how long now, it's been quite a while now, the style is authentic, okay? I'm sitting here, it's actually first thing in the morning, I've got my tea, and I'm giving you uh, my breakdown on a 6,000 word article. Now, I'm not doing this uh, so much to sell our products, but it's giving value to our target audience, okay? You, you are learning something from this, and um, you're watching this video, so it's a win-win for both of us. Now, you need to um, be an authentic personality, guys. You need to take that very seriously. Now, one of the, I haven't got it here, but one of the um, tools that we use all the time is a little iPhone uh, selfie stick with a little microphone that hangs off it. And I'll take that pretty much everywhere I go. And so does my wife. My wife now has her own uh, YouTube channel. And we'll quickly uh, pull out that tool and make a quick video. Now, what that is, is a, it's a spontaneous quick video. And those videos, what we call organic videos, rank very, very highly. If you look at your um, YouTube analytics, you can see that the uh, videos that are authentic and organic and spontaneous rank much more highly, okay? So try not to be so polished. Try to make videos that are more organic. Video marketing. Now, video marketing, uh, takeaway number one, product videos can increase purchases by 144%. Now, that's massive, okay? Um, 144%, so, you know, two and a half times more likely to, uh, sorry, one and a half times more likely to sell a product if there's a product video attached on the selling page. So let's, that means if you have a uh, landing page and you're trying to collect someone's email on the landing page, put a little video there to um, uh, ask them why you're asking for their email, what are you giving in exchange, uh, what valued exchange are you giving them. Uh, if you have a product like uh, you're renting uh, holiday cabins, um, you have a little video there that, that has a fly through of the cabins or, or someone uh, giving a testimonial about the cabin. If you're selling uh, medicinal products, for example, um, have a testimonial video from one of the customers who have bought the product. It'll, it'll improve your sales by 144%. You make that video once, post it on that product page, and it's done. It's done for all time. You can go and update that video once a year if you choose to. Takeaway from video marketing number two, including a video in a post increases organic traffic from search results by 157%. Okay, so most of the written articles on uh, ausdigitalmedia.com have got videos embedded into them. They don't, ha don't have to be your own videos, but they can be videos that you found on the internet and embedded into uh, the post, okay? Um, so look, when you write a, an article, you can bulk out that article with a bit of video content from YouTube or from Vimeo or one of the, the many uh, sources at the moment. Um, I, would try, I recommend using YouTube because remember Google owns YouTube and although it is unofficial, I think that um, having YouTube videos embedded onto your post helps with Google rankings. Uh, I haven't got any uh, statistics to back that up because Google's very secretive, but Look, it's all the one company. So if you play uh, play ball with the one company across many platforms, it should help you over time organically. Email marketing. Email marketing takeaway number one. Marketers who send emails on Tuesdays get the highest open rates. Look, we send videos on uh, a Monday and a Thursday at 11 a.m. If you're part of our mailing list, you will notice the videos pop up in your feed uh, 11 a.m. on a Monday and a Thursday. But um, based on this information I've taken away this week from this, again, this 6,000 word article, uh, we may shift that to Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, because look, st statistics don't lie. Um, there's a pattern emerging from the statistics which say, look, most people uh, will look at that 
um, that uh, email campaign if it's sent on a Tuesday. I think people on a Monday are a little bit foggy. They're a little bit, uh, you know, hungover sometimes from the weekend, a little bit exhausted from the weekend. Uh, they're, maybe they're focused on their work. They haven't got time to uh, look at promotional emails. So we'll, we will probably shift uh, our scheduling to uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would think, from now on. Email marketing takeaway number two, 78% of consumers have unsubscribed from emails because a brand was sending too many emails. Now, uh, look, I'm going to try and find the sweet spot of uh, email marketing campaigns and, and do another video on that as to, that is how many videos, or, sorry, how many email marketing campaigns you can send per week and not piss off your customers. Uh, at, look, at the moment, I think the sweet spot is two videos uh, two email marketing campaigns per week and we use video embedded into those emails uh, because video is stronger but 78% uh, of consumers have unsubscribed now I've done this before I subscribed to a new um, channel this month and I got hit with their automated email campaigns once a day now it was just simply too much it was simply too much it was more time than I was willing to give um, that channel uh, out of my week so I unsubscribed instead of just a couple coming through and maybe having a look and and either uh, clicking or clicking delete I unsubscribed so uh, it was too much so twice a week is a sweet spot at the moment I think lead generation <clears throat> now this is an interesting one lead generation takeaway number one uh, companies that automate lead management see a 10% or more bump in revenue in six to nine months time. This is talking about uh, sales funnels, um, so automated systems to bring in leads. Now we have a couple attached to our website and uh, that's a service that we provide. I'm not gonna promote that service in this video, but um, you know, creating an automated funnel into your um, product that you want to sell is, is something that you should be doing. It's something that uh, all businesses should be doing is creating an automated leads funnel or an automated sales funnel uh, to sell uh, a product that you want to sell. Whether that be uh, a stay in a cabin overnight or um, a, uh, some chocolates that you, if you sell chocolates, we've got a customer who uh, has a chocolate uh, company. You want to have people uh, coming into your website organically through, say, your, your blog posts. Then that blog post drives them to a little click here button with an incentive to click. And then that brings them into a funnel. So once they've clicked, they go to a subscribe uh, form. They give you your email. And that email uh, goes into an automated uh, mail campaign. All these things, you design them once and they're done, right? So the automated mail campaign, you design it. And once the person has uh, given you the email, they're sent automated mail campaigns uh, once a week or twice a week. And then ultimately, uh, after a period of providing value, you give the person an offer uh, that's too good to refuse, uh, what we call the Robert Palmer offer. The Robert Palmer offer being, it's simply irresistible. Anyone uh, who lived in the 80s will know what I'm talking about. Uh, and that is what's called an automated sales funnel. And it's not terribly difficult to build. It does take time, it does take labor to build it. Uh, but I highly recommend that you look at an automated sales funnel attached to your website, okay? Uh, takeaway number two from lead generation, businesses who nurture leads make 50% more sales at a cost of 33% less than non-nurtured prospects. Again, going back to um, talking about a sales funnel, you can't take someone's email, put it into a sales funnel, and then send them automated emails straight away saying, hey, buy this product, buy this product, buy this product. That's the old way of doing business. Um, anyone in the digital world will tell you that the old way of doing business where you simply hang your shackle out the front and say, hey, buy all my products, they're really good, uh, they're really cheap, or, or they're fantastic, it doesn't work. You have to nurture your customers. You have to provide value to them over time. Then maybe after a period of time, you can offer um, a product to that customer that they might want to buy. But if you haven't gained their trust uh, in the first place through the nurturing program, you will not. Uh, you will have a 50% uh, less chance of making a sale. Advertising. Now. 73% of people dislike pop-up ads. I discourage uh, pop-up 
uh, functionality on the websites that we build. Sometimes it is essential to use it if you need to throw a bit of information about the page to someone uh, and there's no other uh, way to do that. You need to, if you need that pop-up to, to make the functionality of the page work. But as far as hitting pop-ups to say, hey, we've got a special, um, we've really moved away from that. Uh, even before reading this information, I had a feeling that that was uh, disliked only because when I browse the, the net and when I speak to my friends who browse the net, when they see a pop-up, they instantly dismiss it without even reading it. So pop-ups are just an annoyance and they disrupt the, the UX, the, uh, the user experience so try not to use pop-ups if you can find any other way around it. 72% of consumers say they would have a lower opinion of a brand if they subjected the consumer to a pop-up ad. That's pretty straightforward. The user is saying, hey, I really dislike that brand because they hit me with pop-ups all the time. I'm going to unsubscribe from their tribe. I'm going to leave their audience. So just don't use pop-ups, guys. Uh, marketing technology. Now, I'm a real nut for marketing technology. <laughs> I'm a bit of a systems geek. I like to look for systems everywhere. Um, I like, look, I listen to a lot of philosophy. I read a lot of philosophy. I'm looking for systems through society. For, I'm looking for systems in, um, in sociology all the time. It's an absolutely fascinating subject. So marketing technology um, is, I'm looking for, for technology that can make uh, our life more automated and can uh, make our businesses more profitable through technology all the time. Takeaway number one, 50% of all mobile users will not recommend a business if the mobile website is poorly designed or unresponsive. Now, we've known this for you know 10 years, but there's still um, customers out there that don't take the design of a website seriously. Uh, that is to say, they'll look at their desktop version of the website and go, yeah, that looks great, it looks fine. You need to look at the mobile design of your website and make sure it looks fine as well. When we build websites, we use a system on the computer here where we can change the view to be a mobile view. And sometimes the um, when the uh, when the website is saying hey we've switched to mobile device and it squashes all the information into a mobile view the text will be on top of the um, image whereas we wanted it the other way around so we'll actually go hey we need to make a small change in the code to make sure that when the when the site shifts from desktop to mobile that the text is where we want it and not the the other way around okay you can program all that into into websites these days uh, so make sure that your make sure that your website looks good on a mobile device and what it comes down to guys is it should look pretty sparse on a desktop because when it's crammed onto a mobile device um, you don't want to have too much information so think of it this way uh, on a mobile device it looks good and on a desktop it looks sparse that's generally a good way to go four out of ten mobile users on uh, use Facebook Messenger now uh, I've done a video on this before um, excuse me. Now, uh, Facebook Messenger is a platform that I've noticed a lot of people using. Now, again, looking at systems, if I see uh, the majority of uh, the people I speak with are using Facebook Messenger to communicate, I'll then go and uh, do some research. And then if it proves uh, valid, which it has, I'll suggest to all our website clients that that we look at putting uh, Facebook Messenger as a chat function on their website, which we have done. And again, that's one of the 10 uh, tips in the uh, uh, 10 tips you must know to make your website boom PDF, which is on our website, is have a uh, Facebook Messenger chat function. We did have a previous version of this uh, Messenger. Now we've gone with a secondary version, a more um, a version that has more functionality. Uh, if you'd like a link to that, reach out and I'll, I'll send you an email to where you can download that one for free. Um, it, it has brought in leads. I spoke to a customer this week and we got an alert on, um, it was actually on my phone for his website that, and it was just someone chatting with the chatbot. And then I followed up a couple of days later and I said to the customer, um, hey, did you get that, that lead that came through your website? And he said, oh yeah, I did, yeah, thanks very much. We're meeting with them next week to discuss a multi-thousand dollar project. Now, that's fantastic, guys. And this customer, uh, this user, uh, or this lead was someone uh, of the older generation who didn't like technology at all and um, he was able to just put his information into the chatbot and instantly chat with the manager of the business and make a booking and now there's a multi thousand multi, multi tens of thousand dollar uh, contract probably coming from that one chat so guys get this system on your website today sales 
65% of salespeople who use social selling fill their pipeline compared to 47% of reps who do not. So what does this mean? 65% uh, of salespeople who use social selling fill their pipeline. So that means you've got to use social media, um, put out uh, regular content, excuse me, on social media and uh, leads will come of it. Guys, the social media, um, well, what should we call it? It's not a revolution, but uh, um, phase that we're going through at the moment um, at this period of time is is where the eyeballs are if you are not putting content where the eyeballs are then you're ignoring the obvious okay so you need to be putting regular content on social media and content that gives value and that drives people into your funnel system prospecting is the most difficult part of the sales process for salespeople well again uh, without sounding like a broken record that that is obviously driving that um, if you can find a way to automate prospecting then you're taking away the most difficult part of the sales process so it's not difficult guys you need to put out regular content all the time uh, blog posts video uh, social um, social content but not just be giving it giving it giving it giving it and not asking anything back that's unfair you can give um, you know a four to one ratio so um, Gary V talks about the um, jab 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 hook which is you know give 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 ask um, so it, it, it's the same thing guys we give out uh, two um, uh, posts a week on all the social platforms, all the major social platforms, and occasionally we'll ask someone to say, "Hey, look, we've got a we've got a uh, a special or a, a, a value proposition that you might be interested in." Okay, but you need to be on the uh, social channels. So a summary: Here we are at the end of the uh, video. Here, give valuable content to your target marketplace. Okay, I've said that before many times throughout this talk. Give valuable. Uh, value oriented content to your target marketplace. Use video where you can. Video is a much, much, much stronger uh, medium than written word, okay? Written word is better organically over time as an asset to draw in um, uh, leads over time, but video is more powerful in converting sales immediately, okay? Uh, be authentic. I'm not going to say any more about that. I've said that too much already. Be authentic. Uh, I'm sitting here first thing in the morning, seven o'clock. Uh, it's actually a Sunday morning at the moment. And I want to do this video. I enjoy doing these videos. So I wanted to do this video, put it out there. Be consistent. Um, you need to do your videos. Look, part of the reason I'm doing this video uh, seven o'clock on a Sunday morning is I didn't get a chance to do the video uh, during the week and it must get done before Monday. It must get done. So uh, look, I'll wake up early and do this video and therefore my pipeline of videos, my marketing campaign is on schedule and we work a month in advance as we do with all our clients. So this video I'm recording now, uh, you're seeing it now, but it was actually recorded a month ago and that's the way I advise all um, businesses to work is use uh, scheduling software, fill that scheduling software a month up in advance and you can sit back and relax, okay? So guys, I hope that has helped you. Please like, share and subscribe. If you have um, taken value away from this video, please consider jo joining our mailing list. We'll give you two uh, value orientated tips per week that will help your business in the digital space. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.